Hello, this is Real World News, which is a journalism program produced by the students at QUT. My name is Maxim Freeman. Joining me today is Dr. Sophia Glazanova, a postdoctoral research fellow at the Digital Media Research Centre here in Brisbane. Sophia joins me today to share some insights into her work specialising in digital media, propaganda and power of communication in Russia and how this relates to us in Australia. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. As a former journalist and government public relations officer in Russia to now a postdoctoral researcher in Australia, can you walk us through how you have come to be where you are today? So I was born in a family of journalists and I was really fascinated by news and I was watching them every day with my parents and actually it replaced me cartoons. For <laughs> so I wasn't a normal kid, so I was really interested in politics and I really wanted to follow the pathway of my parents and I become, um, became a, um, a journalist in the local media in the heart of Siberia. Um, but after a couple of years I realized that politics fascinates me a lot and I was maybe uh, having this romantic idea that um, I can change the world, I can change politics if I know how it's organized. So I um, did my two degrees in political science and I really enjoyed it. Um, at the same time, Russia kind of stepped down from the way of modernization and there were a lot of authoritarian uh, tendencies and um, a lot of media outlets were shut down and censorship become really strong. So I thought that maybe it is the way for me to actually uh, continue and research agenda and I pursued my PhD in Australia so I came to QUT and the topic of my PhD was actually political communication of uh, Russian opposition and now uh, I finished my PhD and I'm working at the uh, most advanced center of the digital media research here at this university and enjoying my work a lot here. Can I just ask what was the, was there a snap de decision to get you to consider coming to Australia or was it a big plan of yours? Well I was considering um, education abroad mm -hmm. um, and actually I think I was looking for some English speaking country and also with a kind of developed traits of journalism and political communication so I find everything here in, mm -hmm. in this university and in Australia. Um, and of course, I think the idea of kind of um, free communication and press freedom kind of fascinated me a lot. So I thought that's a good place to come. Mm -hmm. uh, and your research work encompasses a range of focuses, which includes a look into Russian propaganda and the concept of fake news. Um, but how does this example of Russia and its media compare to Australia and its media? So obviously Australia and Russia, they are two different political systems and they have two different media systems. Obviously in Russia we have a, a highly concentrated uh, media market, so a lot of media outlets are um, associated or owned by the government, uh, associated with some companies that are owned by the government. Um, and of course there's a high level of censorship and especially self-censorship, so many journalists decide to not uh, speak about particular topics that are sensitive to the government. But if we look to um, Australia to and compare them, what I found was in common that um, actually both Australian and Russian media markets are highly concentrated. And if I said that um, in Russia, they're mostly um, government companies or the like government. Uh, here, um, media market is really split between two uh, big media uh, holdings. And I found that this idea of kind of um, high concentration in, uh, in two countries is actually uh, not that, I would say, <laughs> democratic, let's say, but in the way that it kind of prevents uh, journalists to be objective and independent. And um, at core, these two concepts are also quite controversial, but at the same time, um, I think it slows down in both countries the development of uh, journalism. When you talk about that difference between Australia and Russian, uh, Russia in their government, so um, what comes to mind with me with your research and also an infamous example of that might be the uh, Russian TV network or what would be known as Russia Today. Mm -hmm. And in your research, what's one of the most shocking things that Russia Today has done that you think would shock Australian people? 
I don't think there's such a thing of, of a sh some, something can shock me. <laughs> I'm coming from the country uh, with diverse background, let's say, and um, there's nothing um, too fascinating, too sensational, and too shocking about it. I guess it's just about the strategies that they're using and sometimes that uh, communication strategies, sometimes they're different from Western media outlets of what we are uh, used to see. Um, at the moment, I'm uh, studying audiences of Russia Today abroad. And what was really fascinating for me to find that um, Russia Today has a lot of branches, uh, for example, in uh, RT Deutsch, so RT German, RT mm -hmm. Spanish. And we were looking at the audiences of RT um, on Facebook, and we found really uh, distinct six groups which are uh, united by, by a common language, including German, Spanish, and all of them kind of um, have a lot of common traits in a way because, for example, these are mostly the groups that share RT news. Uh, they are mostly uh, media outlets as well, but alternative, not the uh, mainstream media outlets. So they put kind of position themselves as outsiders of the media world. So it's interesting that um, RT attracts these kind of uh, audiences online. Uh, but of course, we are continuing our studying and we'll have some results very soon. Going off that, uh, many people would believe that then they can identify fake news or news which is based more on opinion than fact. Do you believe this is true? And in saying this, how impressionable are people to the messages and ideas conveyed in published news? I think um, to answer your question, I think it's mostly a question for psychologists or <laughs> neuroscientists or how people mm. are kind of... Um, perceive the fake news or how they um, interact with problematic content. But we need to remember that uh, false information existed at all times. And I think now it's just, um, it became really uh, topical uh, also because we have a lot of instruments to verify information and to check information. Um, but also I think um, in the recent digital media news report, um, we could see that um, actually citizens, for example, in Australia, uh, they um, think that uh, general source of misinformation is mostly coming from activists, from governments. So what does it say is that uh, there's not too much trust in society to these institutions. And actually, people all started to believe less to this institution during political crisis or other events. So I think one of the roles that media can play is actually in generating this trust in society pr by providing uh, accurate information, non-biased information, which is really hard to achieve uh, given that we all have, uh, like all the media outlets have different owners and beneficiaries. But at the same time, I think it's one of the, um, can be can be and should be really a trustful source of information by using different journalism practices to provide this information. And in talking about developing that trust between politics, communication, and then just the general public, um, in Russia where the legitimacy of news information may appear dubious at best of times, how do sceptical members of the public gain access to the truth and share this with each other in the public? Well, the answer is the internet. <laughs> um, of course, there's um, a lot of information circulating uh, in the internet, which is alternative to mainstream media um, in Russia. And this is what my thesis is about, is how political activists use internet to communicate with their supporters and attract uh, people to their political activities. Um, of course, social media platforms play a really vital role in uh, getting the truth um, in Russia, and mostly these are international media platforms such as Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, um, because they have uh, uh, less chances to be blocked um, in Russia, but they are in the imminent threat as well to be uh, blocked. So I think it's really important to look how um, and to understand that these um, platforms kind of giving the voice to a um, alternative uh, media outlets, the ones that are trying to provide um, anti-establishment agenda, but also uh, investigative journalism, which is also really flourishing on the Russian internet, but also giving voice to political minorities and uh, actors that are seeking uh, for political power and struggling for democracy. And in a generation that's uh, given so much access for young people to so much media, information, 
whether it's genuine or not, uh, what is your advice for young people engaging with news? Well, first and probably the most obvious, uh, don't believe everything you see and read. Um, try to access the same news from a different uh, media outlets to kind of find the uh, kind of really objective uh, core um, in this news if, if you doubt. And I think if you doubt, actually, if you read in some news and if you doubt, uh, this is a really good sign because you understand that something is wrong here, might need to go and check it again. Um, other advice I would give is to read international news a lot. Um, and when I'm saying that, also um, international news, also non-Western, uh, because I think it's really give like broaden the understanding of the political situation or the situation in the world, and it really helps to um, kind of enlighten your knowledge and and uh, be knowledgeable about a lot of stuff that is happening um, abroad. Um, so yeah, I think these are my two main advice. <laughs> Pieces of advice. Um, and that's all we have time for today. Um, and thank you so much for your time, Sophia, um, and for coming in to talk to us. Thank you. Uh, my name is Maxim Freeman, and this is Real World News. Mm -hmm. See you next time.